Hello everyone. Welcome to this session on what is firewall. As much of the business world continues to go digital, it is imperative that forward thinking companies focus on securing their systems from external threats. One of the ways this has been accomplished since the early 1980s is by employing firewalls. A firewall can be simply explained as a barrier built between a network of users and the external networks that establishes a common security policy between the connected users and the outside world which consists of possible intruders in this session you will be learning about firewalls from scratch so let's see the agenda for this session first we'll be learning about what is a firewall then we'll be learning about the functions of firewall after that we'll be discussing the types of firewalls and then we'll be discussing about why we need a firewall so that's all with the agenda let's start the session but before we begin the session make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us what is a firewall so a firewall can be thought of in a variety of ways the most basic description is that it serves as a filter between a computer and the internet the primary goal of this filter is to protect the computer system by giving and receiving access to only intended and harmless content if firewalls had not been invented the very concept of the internet would have died out soon after it was born because of this concept of firewall the internet can now be considered safe with that said let's move on to our next agenda that is what does it basically do a firewall is an essential component of the system that separates two networks it identifies and blocks attempts to gain access to your operating system as well as unidentified communications it may be present in any form or be it software hardware or even cloud based now let us understand what are the various high level tasks performed by a firewall system first we have prevents the transmission of unwanted information to explain this let's go ahead and consider that on the internet there are no limits to the amount of unwanted content that may be found unless a strong firewall is in place such undesirable content can readily breach the system the majority of operating systems will include a firewall that will effectively block unwanted and malicious internet information the second one is unauthorized remote access is prevented now there are several unethical hackers in the world today that are always attempting to gain access to weak systems the uninformed user has no idea who has access to his machine a powerful firewall eliminates any chance of a potential unethical hacker gaining remote access to a system such remote access is strictly prohibited and may be used for malicious reasons based on protocol and ip address it ensures security hardware firewalls are effective for inspecting traffic patterns based on a certain protocol when a connection is created a record of activity is retained from start to finish which helps to keep the system secure it ensures that business operations run smoothly enterprise software and systems have grown increasingly important in today's business world Authorized stakeholders can utilize and work on the data for successful business operations thanks to decentralized distribution mechanisms and data accessibility across the entire geographical presence. A user can log into his system using credentials on the network. Given such a large network system and large amounts of data, however, having a strong firewall in place is critical, and the firewall is the most significant component in providing security to all of the above components. Without strong firewalls, businesses would struggle to maintain such smooth operations and their activities would be severely limited. The last task that a firewall does is it protects the conversation and coordination content. Organizations in the service industry must continually communicate with third-party clients. They continuously share relevant content with the client and the internal teams as part of various projects. And furthermore, they communicate with internal and external stakeholders through meetings, interviews, conversations, and chats in addition to the contents. Almost all of the content generated by these coordinating operations is confidential and must be well protected. No organization can afford the cost of such essential information being leaked. The firewall efficiently protects the systems and enables for a secure and safe flow of information, giving stakeholders confidence. Now let's move on to our next agenda, that is the types of firewalls. Now we do have a lot of options to choose from when it comes to firewalls. Software firewalls, hardware firewalls or both. 
Depending on their structure are the most common forms of firewalls. Each sort of firewall has its own set of features, but they all serve the same objective. However, it is best to have both in order to provide the most possible protection. A hardware firewall is a piece of hardware that connects a computer network to a gateway. Consider a broadband router. On the other hand, a software firewall is a basic program that works with port numbers and other installed software to protect a computer. Furthermore, based on their features and the amount of protection they provide, there are a variety of other types of firewalls. Now let's go ahead and discuss each of the types of firewalls that can be used by an individual. So the first one that we have here is packet filtering firewalls. The most basic sort of firewall is this one. It functions as a management tool that monitors. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cybersecurity, then IntelliPath has a post-graduation certification in cybersecurity and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. Network traffic and filters incoming packets according to security rules that have already been specified. If a data packet does not meet the defined rule set, these firewalls are designed to block the network IP protocols, an IP address and a port number. Next up, we have circuit level gateways. This firewall is another sort of simplified firewall that can be designed to allow or block traffic without spending a lot of CPU power. These firewalls typically validate TCP connections, that is transmission control protocol, and sessions at the session level of the OSI model. Circuit level gateways are intended to keep established sessions safe. The next one is application level gateways, or as commonly known as proxy firewalls. So a proxy firewall is an early type of firewall device that acts as a gateway from one network to another for a specific application. By prohibiting direct connections from outside the network, proxy servers can provide additional functionality such as content caching and security. However, this may have an impact on throughput and the applications that can be supported. Now we have SMLI firewalls which stands for Stateful Inspection Firewall, sometimes known as a conventional firewall, allows or blocks traffic based on state, port, and protocol. It keeps track of all activities from the time a link is established until it is terminated. Filtering decisions are based on both administrator, defined criteria, and context, which refers to utilizing data from prior connections and packets from the same connection. Next up, we have next generation firewalls or also known as NGFW. Beyond simple packet filtering and stateful inspection, firewalls have evolved. To combat modern threats such as complex malware and application layer attacks, most businesses are implementing next generation firewalls. Let's now discuss threat focused NGFW. All of the features of a regular next generation firewall are present in a thre threat focused NGFW. They also offer advanced threat detection and mitigation services. These firewalls have the ability to respond swiftly to threats. Threat focused NGFW employ intelligent security automation to set security rules and policies, enhancing the overall defensive system's security. Next, we have NAT firewalls, which stands for Network Address Translation Firewall. Firewalls. NAT firewalls also are generally used to access internet traffic while blocking any undesired connections. These firewalls normally mask our device's IP addresses, keeping them safe from intruders. Now let's discuss cloud firewalls. A cloud firewall, also known as firewall as a service, is a firewall that is built utilizing a cloud solution. Third-party suppliers often manage and operate cloud firewalls through the internet. Scalability is the most significant benefit of cloud firewalls. Because cloud firewalls have no physical resources, they can easily grow to meet the needs of the organization's traffic. If demand grows, the cloud service capacity can be increased to filter out the additional traffic. Cloud firewalls are commonly used to secure internal networks or entire cloud infrastructures. Lastly, we have here UTM firewalls, also known as Unified Threat Management Firewalls. A UTM device often integrates the capabilities of a stateful inspection firewall, intrusion prevention, and antivirus in a loosely connected manner. Additional services and, in many cases, cloud management may be included. UTMs are designed to be simple and easy to use. 
With that being the last type of firewall, let's move on to our next agenda. Let's discuss why is a firewall needed. A well-managed firewall will greatly lower your system's risk. Your organization or system could easily fall victim to a cyber attack if you don't have a firewall in place, resulting in the loss of all your vital data. This would not only interrupt major processes, but it would also impair productivity and most likely harm your brand and reputation. Cyber hackers have the ability to quickly examine and infiltrate any device linked to the internet. In absence of a firewall, cyber criminals can make changes to remove or use personal and sensitive information maliciously. The consequences could be severe, resulting in significant financial loss, reputational damage, and fines from authorities. It's always a good idea to have a firewall in place if you access the internet. Cyber threats are pervasive and ever-changing. To safeguard your network and the personal information stored on your computer from cybercrime, one should take full advantage of firewalls. And that's it for this video. Thank you. Just a quick info, guys. If you want to make a career in cybersecurity, then Intellipat has a post-graduation certification in cybersecurity and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost-effective, as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts.